So we have previously discussed how to use triple barrier labeling in order to learn the site, but also how to apply triple barrier labeling in meta labeling set. But now let's take a look at the next type of labels called trans canyon labels. labels. So how actually the idea of trans canyon labels appeared. So if you start using triple barrier labeling, you can see the problem that actually finding the right multiplication volatility multiplicators in order to detect your up, uh, up barrier and down barrier is quite difficult because you do not know in advance how wide they should, they should be. You only usually know the length of the effect you would like to label. For example, you do know that you would like to trend short-term trends, meter trends, or long-term trends. And that's where trans canyon labeling is extremely applicable. Consider a series of, of observation XT, where XT may re represent the price of a security we aim to predict. We wish to assign a label YT, which may equal to either minus one, zero, or one, to every ob observation in X, based on whether XT is a part of a downtrend, no trend, or uptrend. Here is a small note that actually, as we have previously discussed, there is no need to try to predict each value of our, uh, of uh, uh, try to predict the market on every bar, but rather to apply some kind of sampling techniques. So in this case, we will try to predict the price of a security only when some, some filtered events occur. One possibility is to compute the T value associ associated with the estimated regressor coefficient in a linear time trend model, which can be described in the next uh, equation. X of T plus L equals to beta zero plus beta zero L plus uh, epsilon T plus L, where T coefficient is the estimate of your slope coefficient divided by the standard deviation of the slope coefficient. So as we can see, we can take various look forward regressions to fit uh, the regression model and find the T value. So various values of uh, L, L is the number of bars from uh, current bar we used to fit a regression, uh, of course, lead to different T values. So how to choose them? What you can actually do is to fill multiple regressions starting from T to T plus L and find the one which yields maximum absolute T value. So for example, if we use 20 days window, uh, observation window uh, in, uh, in a model, we will use uh, next regressions. Starting from T0, uh, T0 is a, a time when the filtered event was generated. T0 for T1, estimate this regression, T0, T1, T2, estimate this regression, T0, T1, T3, up till T0, uh, T1, um, 3, 20. And out of those multiple regressions, we will find various absolute T values to find the one which yields the maximum T value. So here are several pro tips. Trans canyon labels may be used in the classification setting by taking the sign of T value. In this case, we have two label classification sign. So when, when we have found the regression which yields the maximum absolute value of uh, T value, the value of our label either minus one or, 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 or one is simply the sign of, the, of this T value. We may also add minimum threshold for the absolute value of T value to detect range in periods. Because when the price of a security oscillates around some uh, value, in this case, usually T values of your regression model will be quite low, meaning that we are in, into range in market. Range in market. Right? In this case, we can either filter out those uh, samples because we would like to fit only clean trends into our trend model, or we can use three label classification setting by um, using various thresholds on the absolute value of T values in order to uh, detect ranging periods and label them as zero. Actually, T values may be used as sample weights in your model training. In the next lecture, we will discuss how sample weights are used uh, in both uh, model, model fit and uh, model scoring. But uh, right now, let's just remember about that. 
and uh, we can use the absolute values of t values if you would like to train the model which uh, takes more attention to clean trends so in this case t values are great sample weights t values may also be used in a regression setting to predict the magnitude of a trend so you can actually use the raw value of your t value and use a regression setting that's actually a very uh, interesting question because sometimes and in the most of the cases actually we don't need the prediction of price of a security uh, with an error of one dollar we would we would rather to predict the direction of price uh, direction uh, within the direction of price and the magnitude of this direction so t values are great proxies to direction and the magnitude of that and actually ml finlabs function may be also used not only to label the sample in this case your default value of parameter look for look forward equals to true but also to generate t values as features for trend classifier by taking multiple backward looking regressions in this case your look forward parameter should equal to false so what you, you do in this uh, in this case you start fitting regressions from t minus l up till t0 so you will fit this regression this kind of regression and this kind of regression and find the one which yields maximum t value and in this case uh, it is very good alternative to widely used technical features uh, because this, this approach uh, has many statistical uh, properties and uh, t values are quite good in detecting those kind of trends so now let's take a look at uh, um, at ml finlabs uh, function signature in ml finlab documentation so in ml finlab documentation we can still see the picture from the presentation and as we can see we can either use it in a look forward uh, setting to label the current value of label but we also use we can also use that to apply it in a backward looking setting to use t values as features so let's take a look at, at function signature so trend scanning labels takes price series as input it takes t events meaning that we, we would like to filter out only filtered events if the t events um, uh, list or series uh, equals to none in this case we will try to label each sample uh, from uh, the price series the observation window makes uh, means the maximum win, uh, window of either look forward regression or backward back uh, backward looking regression as we have discussed earlier look forward uh, parameter which is equal to true because initially trans canyon labels were used to label the data set equals to uh, true but uh, if we set it to false it will fit backward looking regressions and minimal sample lengths so still you, you need um, the amount of data to fit your regression and uh, fitting the regression with only two or three points is quite difficult and your results will be, will be quite unstable so what you, what you can do is to set a minimum sample length to fit your regression so in this case you will start fitting your regressions uh, from uh, fifth uh, offset uh, so that your results are much more stable and the final uh, parameter is step for example you have you need to fit a multiple looking regressions with an observation window of 1000 or 10000 of course fitting each uh, step each window in your regression so t t plus 1 t plus 2 t plus l may take uh, quite a bit of time but in what you can do here to speed up this process is to fit for example every fifth or every tenth window the quality of your labeling probably won't suffer but the amount of time you spend on labeling will decrease massively we have discussed how trend scanning labels are used to create uh, and label uh, trend type of algorithms and in the next lecture we'll discuss how to use matrix flags which are actively used and applied in factor investing and uh, a long short uh, portfolio type of strategies.